Hello everyone. I am grateful to be honored with such a platform to discover the possibility of establishing sustainability in the environment. Seeing the effects of climate change of South Asia, which includes steady sea level rise, increased cyclonic activities, and changes in ambient temperature and precipitation patterns, there is a reduction in the fresh water availability, disturbance of morphological processes, and a higher intensity of flooding. Regarding local temperature rises, the IPCC, that is the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change, figure projected for mean annual rise in the temperature by the end of the century up to 3.3 degrees Celsius, with a maximum range up to 4.7 degrees Celsius. India's GDP could decline up to 9% due to shifting growing seasons for major crops such as rice, wheat, maize, etc., production of which could fall by 40%. If global temperatures were to rise by a mere 2 degrees Celsius, around 7 million people are projected to be displaced due to this. Climate change in India and Pakistan will have a disproportionate impact on more than 400 million that makes up the India's poor. This is because so many people depend on natural resources for their food, shelter and income. More than 56% of the people in India work in agricultural sector that's the reason India is said to be the nation with agricultural economy. And the major reasons contributing the change in the food systems and disturbing the diets of the people are due to acid rains. Now, understanding acid rains can be easy. Let's say the vehicle emissions containing harmful gases such as oxides of sulfur, carbon, and nitrogen contaminate the atmospheric layer and infect the purity of the air. The gases react with the ozone present in the sun rays and as a result, sulfuric acid and nitric acid are formed. These acids mix with water vapors and deposit on the farmlands and affect the crops and nutrient balance of the soil. The majorly affected regions are the rural sector, while the majorly affecting regions be the urban sector. In addition to carbon dioxide, automobiles produce methane and nitrous oxides from the tailpipe and hydrofluorocarbon emissions from leaking air conditioners. The emissions of these gases are small in comparison to CO2. However, the impact of these emissions can be important because they have a higher global warming potential than carbon dioxide. 4.6 metric tons. Yes, that is the amount of carbon dioxide a typical passenger vehicle emits per year. This number can vary based on the vehicle's fuel economy and the number of miles driven per year. The carbon dioxide emissions from a gallon of gasoline give about 8,887 grams of CO2 per gallon. Of diesel, give more than 10,000 per gallon. And the average passenger vehicle emits about 404 grams of CO2 per mile. That is approximately half a kg of carbon dioxide every two kilometers. The CO2 emissions, the carbon dioxide emissions, have depicted a gradual increase in contributing to the temperature and contamination in the atmosphere rise since 1880. A gradient of about 1.1 degrees Celsius and raise of up to 410 parts per million of contamination in the atmosphere, it has shown concerning signs. These depositions affect the food and agricultural sector extensively as when the gases accumulate and get mixed with the rain, acid rain is observed, which deteriorates the quality and quantity of the agricultural crop and also reduces the fertility of the land. Changes in the climate balance over the established farmlands and also affects the cropping patterns of the concerned regions. The changed cropping pattern has an adverse impact on the diet of geometrical or the local population as availability of the nutrient-rich food crops is less and thus results in the poor diet and nutrition of the areas. The food quality served in the market is poor and also expensive due to the on-field losses due to spoilage. Now, what is the solution for this? Is that introduction of the neutralization policy. Yes, it is to regulate a legal and mandatory practice of not just planting the trees, but also maintaining the plantations by the buyer of any type of new vehicles or any other pollution causing item or equipment. The largest amount of air pollution is the vehicle emissions, which in turn cause the acid rain. And the legal policy to be established 
which will mandate the citizens who buy new vehicles to efficiently contribute to the balance the harm caused by the same vehicle emissions and build a sustainable environment in future this will eventually help the crop development and the fertility of the farmlands and the food quality of the regions will depict a gradual development now this basically consists of three steps step 1 is the planting accountable plantations in respective plantation hubs on the buyers or planters id a green card will be issued by the governing authorities proving the legal and accountable plantations step 2 is that only after the successful registration and plantation of the saplings a green card to be issued which is necessary for the possession of the newly purchased vehicle at the dealership and step 3 as a result eventually we are benefited with a balanced and sustainable environment as the harm projected is already taken care of by planting trees at the time of purchase of the vehicles you know talking about the need or why is this policy necessary what is the genesis for it is that the need for this policy is important as establishing a legal and official mandate is projected to be more effective and long lasting as compared to just an establishment of a moral principle this policy brings out a feature in which the buyer or the planter as we say is not only responsible to plant a tree but also liable to its complete development until it reaches maturity a futuristic approach of building a sustainable environment will be more effectively approached and practical with the successful implementation of this policy and the process for the implementation of the same shall be that firstly setting up of zonal governed plantation zones that we call the plantation hub where all the legal plantations by the vehicle buyers are to be performed under long term accountability further a documented process of registering the plants and codes for identification similar to the pan card or aadhar card etc shall be delivered to the planter in the form of green cards once a licensed document issued by the plantation hub which confirms the authorized plantation of the buyer is submitted to the vehicle dealership of that respective zone and only after rechecking the actual possession of the newly purchased vehicle will be delivered to the buyer if the buyer fails to do so if the buyer fails to uh, show his green card the position will be not delivered to him and the uh, and the delivery shall be postponed until they produce a proper green card at the dealership the zonal plantation hubs shall be governed by the agricultural departments of the respective states and reporting directly to the central government and the chief justice of india other than the chief justice of india no other body will have any right to amend the rules and every buyer will be treated equally no vip treatments all the plantations will be governed and allotted by the agricultural institutions of central and state in order to support the regional biodiversity of the respective zones all the officials working under these hubs shall be state government appointed and central government monitored all the legal residents of india all the dignitaries with no exception from middle class man to the honorable president of india or any person who buys a vehicle from any indian dealership is to obey this policy talking about the concept and advantages behind this idea or policy are that instead of just a theoretical and a moral based idea the introduction of such a legal policy makes the environmental sustainability more practical and implementable any vehicle offers its efficiency in the early 6 to 7 years but past that period the same vehicle starts affecting and polluting in the form of major emissions so to balance that out to neutralize the same in the same time period the plantations done by the buyer at the time of purchase are matured and offer sustainability to the environment it also helps in developing accountability of every citizen towards the global environment scenario and assures food safety and high quality diet after a detailed observation in the current global and national environmental scenario and its direct indirect effects on our food quality and nutrition we can firmly conclude that the harm caused to the environment is certainly irreversible but is repairable to some extent and we should try our best to do so this act might not impact at a very large scale in the very primary stage but in not more than a couple of years an increased purity in the climatic conditions and environmental beauty will be started to refurbish and regenerate into the desired 
nature it should always have been. As a responsible citizen of this great nation and as a global representative for the welfare of this planet, I, along with you, shall solemnly pledge to serve and preserve the flora and fauna surrounding our zones and would encourage all the citizens and governing bodies to establish this idea or this policy for faster and efficient results. Only then can we start preserving our zone, our city, our state, our nation, and eventually our earth. Thank you so much for your time and let's get together for a better future.